In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a stunning Alton effect to images using Affinity Photo. Not only that, but I also explain the best way to apply the effect to make photos look more appealing. Hello, I'm Robin Worley, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the beautiful Alton effect using Affinity Photo software. This is a great way to give your photos a unique look that's ideal for landscape and woodland photography. So let's get started with editing this evening scene I recently shot in the Peak District. It's an ideal subject for applying the Orton effect because of how it will enhance the light and colour in the image. To produce this digitally, I'm first going to duplicate the image layer. I can do this by right clicking on the layer in the Layers Studio panel and clicking the Duplicate option in the menu. I'll then rename the new layer to be Glow. Just double click the name on the layer to enter the new name. The other change we'll make with this layer is to the blend mode, which is in this drop down at the top of the layers panel. Be sure you have the glow layer selected and then change the blend mode from normal to screen. This is going to make the image appear brighter and overexposed. To better judge the effect, reduce the layer opacity down to around 50%. We can come back to refine this later. We now need to blur the glow image using a Gaussian blur filter. Affinity Photo has two Gaussian Blur filters, which are a regular filter that's applied directly to the image layer, and a Live Filter Adjustment layer. We want to use the Live Filter Adjustment layer because it allows us to continue to adjust the level of the blur in future. To add it, click the Live Filter icon to the bottom of the Layers panel. Then in the list, choose Gaussian Blur. We'll start by applying a blur with a radius of about 20 pixels, which we can refine later. This is enough though to create a softening effect in our image, but because we've lowered the layer opacity, we can still see the sharp layer below it. Something else that you might want to use is the option to preserve luminosity. Without this, your glow won't extend all the way to the edges of the frame, but it can also reduce the glowing effect, so it's best to experiment. We can now close our Gaussian Blur filter dialog and add a new layer to control the glow contrast. We can do this by adding a new Levels Adjustment layer. Click the Adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the Layers Studio panel and select the Levels option from the menu. Because the new Levels layer has been added above the other layers, it's going to affect all of them. We only want it to affect the Glow layer, so we need to attach it to that layer. Click on the Levels layer in the Layers Studio panel and then drag it with your mouse, dropping it onto the Glow layer. If you've done this correctly, it should appear slightly inset below the glow layer. Now we can move the white level to the left to lighten the image further, and do the same with the gamma level also moving it to the left. Because the two adjustments we've made are on layers attached to the glow layer, we can continue to refine their effect. We can also refine the overall strength of the effect by changing the opacity of the glow layer itself that the filters are attached to. Whilst this has produced a basic glow effect, we can make it look much better. The best method of applying an Alton effect to an image is selectively, based on how bright or dark the area of the image is. An easy way to do this is using the Blend Ranges control, which we can access by clicking this small cog icon at the top right of the Layers Studio panel. Each layer in the Layers panel has its own Blend Ranges control, so be sure you have the Gaussian Blur layer selected when you use this. The control allows you to hide or show the filter's effect based on how dark or light each pixel is. The left of these two grids controls the currently selected layer and where it's applied. When I click and drag the left side of the line down to the bottom, it removes the blur from the darkest pixels, but it leaves it in place for the light pixels. We do this because we don't want to produce a glow in the dark areas of the image, because that can look messy. You can also use this technique with the Levels layer if you want to control where that's applied. Don't worry if you don't understand the Blend Range controls, I'll share a video at the end of this one that will explain them in detail. Now although we've created a soft focus effect across the brighter areas of the image, it's affecting the sky too much. To remove it, we'll add a mask to the layer. Now we can paint onto the mask using a soft paintbrush and black paint to hide the effect. I have the paintbrush set to a hardness of 0% to produce a soft edge. I also have the flow at 10%, allowing me to build up the paint gradually and keep the effect looking natural. I'll also remove the glow from the rock because I don't like it there. 
In a moment I'll show you a great special effect to take this even further with the image, but first we need to refine our adjustment. If I turn off the glow layer, you can see the effect that it's already producing. Now let's change the glow layer opacity to 100% to make it easier to judge the change we're going to make. We can then adjust our level of glow easily by changing the blur radius. After that, we'll reduce the opacity down to 50% and we'll use the levels to refine the contrast and brightness even further. You can use all three levels to do this. After that, we change the glow layer opacity to set the strength of the effect overall. Now for that special effect I mentioned. Once you're happy with the look of the glow layer, duplicate the layer. Now select the duplicate layer and at the top of the layers panel, change the blend mode from screen to be vivid light. This makes the glowing areas of the image light up with color. You can also use the linear light blend mode for an even stronger effect. Then you can adjust the overall opacity to change the strength of the glowing light. And we can also use the blend ranges which we touched on earlier. At the time, I didn't explain the blend ranges controls fully, which is why you need to watch this video next. It explains exactly what the controls do and how they work and just how powerful they can be. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Robin Worley, thanks for watching today and I hope to see you again in another video soon.